Hey, it's Aaron Kushler and welcome to another video from EBSC. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own garage gym. So picture this scenario, it's five o'clock, you've just finished work and you're heading to the gym for a good training session. You get there and the gym is packed. There are people everywhere. You wanna go and do your squats. Someone's in the squat rack curling. What do you do? One of the benefits of having a, a garage gym is that you can train whenever it suits you with whatever you like. It's, it's training on your terms. So you're not going to the gym and having to wait for equipment to be freed up or you know having to deal with, with people asking you, middle of your set, you know, how long have you got left on this piece of equipment? In your own garage gym, you don't have any of that worry. So you can train whenever you want with whatever you want. When it comes time to setting up your own garage gym, I'm gonna take you through a few steps that I've used uh, to set up my own garage gym from start to finish. So some things to consider and how to work around those things depending on what your situation is. So let's jump straight into it. So the first one you're gonna to have to consider is obviously the space you have available. What I've got here, there's three sort of main areas that people have available to set up a gym in. The first one would be a single or spare room. So if the space that you've got doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be in a garage. If it is a small room, that's a consideration that you've got to, got to have. So the equipment that you're going to be looking at is going to be uh, efficient on space. So we're not looking to take up you know, a big amount of space. There are some things you can work in to utilize that small space that you do have available. The next one would be a single car garage and then obviously a two car garage, which is, you know, you've got plenty of room in a two car garage. With a single car garage, you're probably looking to save a bit more space as well, but obviously you've got a bit more room in a single car garage than just a single room in the house. Uh, so we'll go through options that you can use for each of those spaces that you have available. The next area would be the floor, walls, and ceiling. So a lot of the times people don't sort of take this into consideration. Prepping those first is going to set you up in the long run as to what you can actually do with the space that you do have. So you wanna first consider the concrete slab. Uh, that's a big one because if you're gonna be in there, especially if you're doing any type of Olympic lifting where you're lifting the barbell overhead and then you might drop it on the ground, if your slab is connected to the rest of your house and you're the only one training in there and people are inside, they're gonna hear it. Like it's very, very loud because it's all connected. The vibrations are gonna travel through that slab. So that's something to consider. Is the concrete slab in your garage directly connected to the house? If you don't know this, just quickly go over to where the, the wall is uh, in between the garage and the house. And if there's a little strip of foam along that, there's a good indication that the two slabs have been laid at different parts and they've put what's called an expansion joint in between. So most of those vibrations that you're gonna get from dropping the barbell aren't gonna go through to the house. If it's a one continual slab, then you're gonna have that problem. When it comes time, obviously, to getting the floor, if you have got a slab that runs all the way through, then you'd be looking for some thicker rubber flooring that's gonna take a bit of that impact and lessen the effect on the house. The stud or brick walls, so that's another important one, is the garage that you've got or the space available, is it a plastered finish or have you got bricks? So if you're wanting to attach things like pull-up rigs to the walls, this is very important. So studs, obviously, whenever you're attaching anything, you wanna be drilling into a stud, not into the plaster. The same with the brick wall. So are they solid bricks or are they the hollow bricks that might have those three little holes in them? Because when you're drilling into them, if you hit the pocket where there's a hollow in the brick, it creates a bit of a compromised position for it to, to be anchored to. So that's a consideration as well. There are ways you can work around that and it just takes a little bit of due diligence just to find where those points are that you can drill into and secure things so they're not gonna come off the wall. And then the ceiling height, obviously that's another concern as well. So if we wanna be doing things like pull-ups or we are doing any overhead pressing, is the bub, is the ceiling at a low height that the barbell's going to potentially push up into that ceiling. So if you're doing things like box jumps in there, say it's on you know 30 inch, if you stand on top of that, are you going to be hitting your head on the ceiling? So these are they sound really, really simple and basic principles, and they are, but these are things that you need to consider based on the space you have available. Also as well, uh, depending on what you're gonna be putting in there. So later down the track, are you looking at getting bigger equipment that's going to be much taller. So things like power rack, uh, maybe you're gonna get a small matrix set up in there. 
these are things that you need to consider as well. So our first pieces of equipment that we're going to buy when setting up a garage gym, some of these you might have seen obviously before, others may not. So the first one uh, I would suggest is a yoke. So a yoke is going to allow you to carry it. You can use uh, the same attachments, so the J hooks that you would get for a power rack or you know a matrix setup, you can use them on the yoke. So if you get a compatible one, say you buy it from, from Rogue for instance, uh, the Rogue attachments will fit that yoke. So you can use that yoke for squatting, bench pressing, uh, a whole number of different things, carrying, you can push it along in like a sled. So there's various exercises that you can do just with that one piece of equipment. Then obviously we're gonna be looking at barbell and dumbbells. Now here is where you wanna spend a little bit of money, get a good quality barbell, uh, one that's going to stand the test of time. There's no point in buying a cheap barbell, which you know, you, obviously you're gonna be getting stronger. You're gonna to get to a point where you're gonna lift that thing up and you don't want it to bend or break on you. So getting a good quality uh, barbell um, and if you have a smaller space, maybe dumbbells, or if you've got the space and you've got the budget, getting both. So those, you, you've pretty much got the, the makings of a small gym there just in those uh, two pieces of equipment. So as long as you've got a barbell and some dumbbells, you can pretty much do most things. Weight plates uh, and collars, obviously, they are coupled with the barbell as well, but the weight plates, you've got a few different options there. So the cheaper option is to get the cast iron weight plates, so they're just formed, some of them are cased in, in rubber coating. They're not really designed to be dropped. You can't do any movements where you will be dropping them on the ground because they will break. The other alternative, which is slightly more expensive, is the bumper plates. So for Olympic lifting, for instance, if you're doing CrossFit training or anything where you're dumping the barbell on the ground, uh, bumper plates are actually designed to hit the ground and not break. So they would be a really good investment if you're doing that in your training. So it's really up to you as to what you're gonna be doing in the training sessions that you're gonna be doing at your garage gym. And then obviously a bench as well. So if you're wanting to do things like bench press or rows, anything that's gonna involve a bench uh, with this setup here, getting a good quality bench uh, is another good one. So there's many different types. You can get just a flat bench. You can get ones with inclines, declines. It, again, it really comes down to what you're gonna be doing in your sessions and what's gonna serve you uh, when you do that. So have a look at some good quality benches there. Secondary equipment. So this is once you've already established and you've got this, which this alone is going to give you most of what you're gonna want. Secondary equipment is either once you've got a bigger space or you want to you know, move it up to the next level and create you know, a bigger setup for yourself. So things to consider in this section here uh, would be looking at a power rack, okay? Or a power rack or a matrix setup. The beauty thing with a lot of the matrix setups is you can customize them yourself. So you can set it up however your, you know, your, your garage gym is, is gonna be run. So if you've got limited space, as we said earlier, uh, you can get smaller ones to suit that. Or, you know, alternatively, if you've got a big two-car garage, you can get a much bigger one. A GHD, now this is not essential, but it's a very, very useful piece of equipment. If you have one of these, you can use it for many different things. A GHD, the, the only downfall with them is they take up a lot of space. So that's why it's on the secondary equipment list because of the space that it does take up. In a moment, I'll show you around some of the things that I've got in my garage, gym, And as you'll see, the, the GHD does take up a fair bit of space. Dumbbells and kettlebells, so if you haven't got them in this part up here, uh, this is where you'd, you'd get these, obviously, so they're the next step. So once you've got the barbell, then you'd be looking at dumbbells, so you can do a lot more things. Dumbbells, kettlebells, I would probably go with dumbbells. You can do, you know, pretty much everything you can do with a kettlebell with a dumbbell. The only problem with kettlebells, I find, depending on, you know, what you're doing again in your training, is if you're doing any pressing, so bench press, they're just a little bit awkward to use when you're using a bench. You can still do it. However, they're just a little bit on the awkward side as opposed to dumbbells. And then obviously bands. Bands are another good one. So you can add them to your barbell lifts if you wanna do any sort of dynamic effort training, or you, you can just use the bands themselves to actually get a good workout. So you can do uh, various different things with bands. You can attach them to the rig and you can you know pull them, do face pulls, things like that. So bands are really, really great. Plyo boxes, um, again, this is dependent on 
A, the space that you've got and the height of the ceiling, etc. So if you've got somewhere that you can use these outside, that's not gonna be an issue, but if you're gonna use it exclusively in your gym, that's something that you wanna consider yourself is you know how high the ceiling is, what your sort of limitations are. So there's plyo boxes here, there's many different types. So obviously the timber ones, uh, most of them, they're pretty easy to make, you can build them yourself. Or there's the, the foam padded ones. So you know they're, they're great big blocks of foam, obviously in a casing, so that if you do mess up a box jump, you're not gonna hit your shin on timber and it's gonna tear it apart. So it's gonna be a bit of a softer landing. And then obviously uh, big pieces of equipment like rowing machines and airdyne bikes. Yeah, they're really cool and they're, they're really great to, to have in your garage gym setup. But again, they do take up a bit of space and depending on how much you've got available and how much you can work with, they're probably in the secondary equipment list. You know, they're not essential, they are good to have. So those are some points to consider when setting up your garage gym. What I'll do now is I'll just take you through uh, my garage gym setup and show you a little bit of the things that we've got. Just to run my setup through this, this list here as well, we do have a two car garage, which has then been converted into a enclosed space. So again, that's another consideration as well is, is the two car uh, garage setup, is it more like a carport with a you know, continuous opening or is it an enclosed space? The concrete slab for me is continual all through the house. So it's all one slab. So if we drop barbells in here, uh, inside the house, you will feel it. The stud or brick walls, so we've got a brick wall that connects to the house. The rest of the walls are either doors or there is a small, or the, basically the wall behind uh, the blackboard here is a stud wall. And then the ceiling height, it's just a standard ceiling height which runs through from the house. So we've actually got just your standard uh, 2400 ceilings. So we don't really have the space to be able to do it. 30 inch box jumps in here, you will hit your head on the ceiling. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that we've done in here to sort of work around those limitations. So I'm gonna show you around uh, my garage gym. I've got a two car garage, which has then been converted into a gym. So as you can see, I've got a fairly large space to work with here. So I run my business out of here. Basically we've set that up so that it's the most efficient setup we can use. So if we go back to our list, uh, we've got the concrete slab, so we've got the concrete slab and then the stud stud walls. So we've got brick on one of the walls and then this is a stud wall here and then the ceiling height as well. So as you can see, the ceiling height isn't that great. I can almost touch the ceiling right there. So what we've actually done, I've got a power rack set up in here, which I'll show you just now. Uh, we get questions about this all the time, whether we did this on purpose or not. However, luckily we did have a skylight put in uh, a, a little while ago. So what we've done basically is set the rig up so that uh, we've got a pull up bar in that higher space. So if you've got a part in your garage where there is a skylight, you can um, maneuver things around that are going to suit anything that's really tall. The floor that we've got, basically we're using the 10 mil thick rubber flooring. And what I've done as well is run plywood just down the middle of it. So it's sort of like a, a little bit of a lifting platform, if you will. Completely optional, you don't have to do this. And you don't even have to get the rubber for your floor. You can just go straight onto concrete if that's all you've got available at, the po at that point in time. So just to show you, that's basically the setup that um, I'm running at the moment, which is the plywood all the way down the floor. And then we've got the rubber flooring as well. So I'll bring it right down here so you guys can see. So basically, so basically that's about 10, 10 mil thick. You know, you can get the 15 mil thick stuff um, as well, which is, is obviously just slightly a little bit thicker. It does dampen the, the noise a little bit, uh, not heaps. So you still will get, you know, that vibration that will go through the slab if it runs all the way through. So the plywood basically sits on the slab, just hard down, and you just glue that to the actual slab. And then you put the rubber flooring just next to it. And it's the same level. So obviously whatever uh, flooring that you get, make sure that the plywood is the same thickness so that then you don't get a lip uh, on that area. And then over here, what I've got is a brick wall, which I've painted these bricks. If we wanna bolt anything to this, these are solid bricks, so we can drill straight into the, the middle of the brick and not uh, have any issues there. If these are hollow bricks, you will have a pocket in between that's got just 
just air, which when you drill in through, uh, into those bricks, you're gonna feel it, the drill bit will just go all the way through. Not the most sound anchorage point. If you've got solid bricks, it is a little bit better, but um, that's something to consider as well. So try drilling just a pilot hole through and seeing what the anchor points are like. So if you use something like a Dynabolt, which I've done throughout this gym here. Dynabolts are basically these things here. Now this one's obviously pulled through a little bit, which is why it's got so much thread coming out. But they basically attach things to brickwork. So if you drill a hole into the brickwork, you can then attach timber to the face of that. So that's what I've done here actually is, so we've got a plywood board on the brickwork here. Um, which then I can just screw things straight into. So if I want to hang things up, I can just put a screw in and just hang it straight up rather than drilling into the brick all the time. So one of the first pieces of equipment you're going to look at is a barbell. You want to get a good quality barbell. The one I've got here uh, is a 20 kilo power bar, which is from Iron Edge and it's made in, it's made in Australia. Getting yourself a good quality barbell, yes, it's gonna set you back financially just a little bit, but in the long run, it's gonna stand the test of time and not bend or break. Uh, with what you're doing with it. So if you get a cheap barbell, you run the risk of the collars, uh, perhaps the, the ball bearings that they put in there maybe breaking or you know, even worse, the collar might come off completely. The next one is weight plates. Now with the weight plates, what I've got is bumper plates here. So I've got a whole bunch of 10s and 5s, 20s, and then obviously the road plates, the 20s, and then the 225s. Now running a business, obviously I need a lot more weight plates when clients are here. However, if you're just starting out, you probably don't need as many plates as what I've got here. Just a simple setup that you can get in a pack. Uh, most of the time from the equipment supply places, they'll have packs of uh, weight plates, is a really great start. So that's all you're gonna need is a few weight plates, a couple of hundred kilos of uh, weight. So you might get packs of 150 kilos um, or 200 kilos, and that's made up with you know, fives, tens, uh, you can get 15s if you want, 20s and 25s. So you can actually customize the pack to suit what you're gonna be doing. And then obviously we've got collars. You can go either a couple of ways here. There's the simple spring collars, which are really, really simple, easy to use, uh, and they're pretty reliable actually. They're, they're pretty good. So just those are great. If you want a different sort of collar, there's the lockjaw collars. Obviously these sort of grab hold of the barbell a little bit more than the, the spring collars would. So you, Basically, they go onto the barbell, they click in, and then you've got this little handle here which you flick up and it comes up. Uh, if you want a step up from that, there is you know, your, your Olympic weightlifting collars, which are these uh, big ones here. So they go on the barbell like that, and then you've got this twisting collar, show here, this twisting collar which twists and pushes the plates together. So it's a really secure collar, depending on, on what you're gonna be doing. The next one would be dumbbells. So dumbbells, really simple. You can do a lot of different exercises with them. Now what I've got here, just the standard rubberized hex head dumbbells. So I've got a kit that goes from 10 all the way through to 40 kilos. Again, which is more than enough for what most people are gonna be doing. Uh, you know, running a business out of here, I need a lot more uh, dumbbells than your average person might need. You can get these individually. Most of the supply places online, you can get these at a relatively you know, cheap sort of price. And then next we've got a bench. So I've just got a really simple basic bench. Uh, I do have another one which is outside actually, but I've taken it out just because of space. So this is a bench here that I've got. Obviously you've got adjustment here and you've got adjustment in the back. It does decline as well as incline as well. So that's uh, pretty useful for obviously doing what I'm doing. That's gonna be very useful. The secondary equipment, we mentioned first up that we've got a power rack. Now, having a two car garage, which is the setup that I've got, uh, having a power rack in here is really great. So I can have many people working out using the same rack at the same time. So that it's, it's very, very efficient for what I'm doing. What I've actually done, I had two individual power racks uh, that were in a matrix setup. And I got these for, through a wholesale. And what I basically did is took uh, the two and combine them sort of into one. So instead of having four lots of uprights, I now only have three. So if we have a look, you've basically got one set of uprights here, one just there, and then one further down. So you've, you've got space for, you know, a couple of people to be able to do squats, you know, presses, deadlifts in the same vicinity. And then in the center, obviously again, we've got the pull-up rig, which then goes where the skylight is. 
So all the way around we've got pull-up bars, all the way around the, the power rack, which makes it really useful. However, they're, they're sort of quite low. So if we want to do anything like pull-ups, etc., we use the one in the middle, uh, which is not governed by height because we've got that skylight there. The other thing to consider when you get a power rack is getting really good J hooks. So J hooks are these things here. So these clip onto the power rack and allow you to sit your barbell on them. There's a couple of options with these. You can get this sort of one here, which is really, really secure. You can even get just the standard J hooks uh, here where the barbell is sitting on, which have got, you know, your plastic nylon on there, which sort of protects the barbell a little bit and extends the life of it a bit more. So those are just made out of one piece of steel. They're another good option. You know, you're going to need something to attach the barbell to. Alternatively, if you don't want to spend the money on getting yourself a power rack, as some of them will be quite pricey, you can actually build them yourself. So you can use timber to actually build a power rack. I'm gonna put a link down below. There was a great video put out by the Buff Dudes and they made their own power rack and it's, it's pretty awesome. So I'll put a link down below in the description. So if you wanna check that out, click on that link there. Bands are gonna be another staple that you're gonna to wanna to, uh, invest in at some point. So I've got a set here. I've got plenty of bands, you know, all different thicknesses. We've got the big black bands, which are really, really strong blue bands. So these are useful for clients who haven't yet been able to do a strict pull up. You can use them for assistance. Um, and even doing your dynamic work. So if you wanted to do banded deadlifts or banded squats, those are really great. Um, and if you don't have band pins, you can just use your dumbbells, sit them on the ground using your bands, uh, you know, and you can rig something up. So they're really, really uh, useful in a garage gym. Plyo boxes are gonna be another, you know, staple that you're gonna have in your garage gym. So I've got a foam one here from NC Fitness. So it's just basically a foam block covered in uh, you know, like a vinyl covering that, that zips up. These are great, uh, especially again, if you miss a box jump and you hit your shin on it, it's not gonna tear it apart. So it's actually, it's soft enough that if you hit it, it's not gonna hurt, but it's hard enough that if you stand on it, they won't collapse. That's a great option. Uh, alternatively, you can make them out of timber. We have another one that's made out of timber, which is just plywood put together. So they're really simple and easy to make. And then of course, you've got things like the rowing machine. So this is just a Concept2 rower. You know, your, your standard Concept2 rower. You can get Airdyne bikes as well, but uh, the, the only downside with these is they do take up a fair bit of space. So just because of the size, you can uh, run into problems if you haven't got the space. However, the big thing with the rower is you can stand them up when you finish using them. So they're not all, you know, that bad. Depends on what you've got available in terms of space. So another piece of equipment that you might be looking at getting is a GHD. Uh, the GHD is really good. You can do a lot of different exercises on it. However, it is gonna take up a bit of space. So it, as you can see, we've got one here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff packed around it, but it does take up a fair bit of room. So it does stick out, you know, a, a good 1.2 meters from the back of it to the front. So you'd be looking at a pretty big space required for that. We've put it in the corner, we found it still works quite well there. So when setting up your own garage gym, make sure that obviously the GHD is in a space that can still use the front of it obviously, and you've still got adjustment in the foot uh, rests, but it's not gonna take up too much room. So you wouldn't be putting that in the middle of your gym. So hopefully that's given you a bit of insight into how to create your own garage gym and some things to consider some equipment that you might invest in early on and others that you might get at a later stage. If you like this video and you wanna see more, click on the like button on the video and make sure you subscribe so that you get notifications of new content being released. I'll see you next time.